Hello, and welcome to episode 38 of Coach's Corner with Justin and Ethan. I am Coach Justin. And I am Coach Ethan. And today, folks, we're going to be talking about letting go of things in your life, specifically fitness, that may have served you at one time, but no longer serve you now. And you might be hanging on to this idea of what it takes to get fit, aka I only get fit when I cut out carbs or when I run five miles every day. But the reality of your life now might not support that belief system, and that's keeping you from being consistent, which we know is the key to success. So we're just going to kind of talk about our own stories today on things we've experienced like that, you know, um, that we've had to just let go of and and also things that we've allowed into our life that we never really thought we would have fully embraced, but just kind of works and makes sense and allows us to keep showing up every day. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. If you don't know us, um, we've been doing this podcast for eight, nine months now. Yeah. Well, we've worked together for like 20 years. Trainers in the gym floor. We've owned gyms together. We've... Um, at this point now, Ethan has his own studio in Los Angeles where he sees people. I have a business online. But bottom line, we've been doing this for a very long time. That's Weight true. loss, nutrition coaching, general health and fitness consulting. And so now we come together on this podcast to help you guys cut through the noise and get on the straight and narrow for your own health and fitness journey. That's right. There we go. So with that being said, man, well, I got to say, I'll start out with like, I just turned 40 years old last week. Uh, Save the compliments. Don't tell me I look younger. It's okay. You look like 52. <laughs> you don't look a day over 50. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I think 40 is just that age, man. You're turning 40 in like a couple months. of months. Yeah, yeah that's right. pretty close in age. And like, you know, it's a, it's that very like introspective moment in your life. These milestone birthdays, 20, 30, 40, 50, where you're just like, 40 is like, it's 40. I feel like 40 is that, that's the true halfway point, right? Like obviously leaving yeah. your 20s to your 30s has uh, a, a signature to it. Yeah. But you're still, right. but you're, you're still, still pretty you're with still, it. Yeah. Yeah. You still, you still got that. You still got them hormones flowing. You're still yeah. chilling. You're still doing yeah. good. But 40 is, you're entering the F's. Yeah. The 40, 50. Mm -hmm. Right. And I mm. think it is the true, like half, it is middle age by definition. Right. It is, Which is a trip. It is, it is no longer like, oh, I'm like riding out my 20s. It's uh, like, no, I mean, whether, whatever your life is, it's like, yeah. And the like numbers things are there. Things are just, they just aren't the same anymore, you know? It's like, like joints. It's true. I mean, <laughs> I've had more injuries in the last year and a half than I probably have in the last 10 years combined. And they're not oh. like career ending, devastating injuries, but it's just oh, like, oh, wow, this back tweak is lasting six weeks. Like, yep. and I it wasn't even that bad. And like, where maybe in your twenties, it would have been like four or five days, and you're like, all right, yeah, back at it's, it. It's crazy. I did a, I was demonstrating a pull up on the rings, and I like tweaked some elbow flexor. It's like a cop, and like, man, it just will not go away. And yeah, one I think just, cold rep. Yeah. Yep. And it's not like yeah, again, it's not devastating, but like it hurts all the time. <laughs> it's like, oh man. One thing I my was, elbow. Yeah, no, but like one thing I was telling like all our new clients that are over thirty five, I'm like, hey, that like I know you want to get jacked, and I know like we want to just like look awesome and be super fit. The number one objective though is injury prevention. Yes. Because man, guy, girl, doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Yeah. You're it one gnarly like just past the line of ooh, this is not just a tweak. This is. And you are. It's it's done. It's demoralizing. It's you know, the, depressing. Yeah, the amount of time it takes before you return is so much more detrimental than just taking like a, a more tender route. Totally. Right? Yeah. It's just and yeah, the the fundamentally, it's just the healing time is so different. And so we had met, we were in the pregame, the pre-show. We were talking about this concept of like cognitive dissidence, and like one mm. thing that I think of when I think of cognitive dis dissidence is like closing the the gap between what you think and feel it should be versus what it really is. Yeah. And I feel like that's sort of like a, a cognitive dissonance gap that we have to close, but also part of just like calibrating and aligning our brains with being a little bit more accurate to self-assess. Because I think what happens is we have this idea, well, I, but no, I, I, I'm like a marathon runner. I am a you know, CrossFitter, I'm a competitive kickboxer. It's like, well, you were, and I think there's a part of you that, that is that. You can't or remove you, that yeah, part you know, of no, you. No doubt, it's been the foundation of your being. But if the objective truth is that it's been 10 years since you've done any of those things, and in that 10 year period, you've like gotten a busier job, or you've started a family, or you've just like taken your eye off your game, I think the, the goal is to assess that mm. and make sure that you don't just go back and try to like pick up where you left off, but give yourself a little grace to either a ramp back up to that over, you know, 
period of time yeah, whatever's or appropriate. B, entertain the idea that maybe there's something that's more appropriate mm. for you at yeah. this stage of your life. Yeah, without question. Like, you know, I think it comes just this is a process that probably happens with every stage of life. And, you know, like my mom's older. She had me pretty late in the game. And, you know, she started just using a rollator, which is like mm -hmm. those like kind of not quite a walker, but those like walking roller mm -hmm. walker. With the tennis balls in the front? No, no, that's like an legit walker. Uh, okay, okay. The rollator is like that has like the little like almost like a seat, but it just rolls as you walk. Whereas a walker yeah, yeah, is like yeah. a clink, clink. Okay. Clink, clink. Yeah. You know, and so she finally accepted it and she's had all types of hip and knee replacements and all types of stuff. But, you know, like mentally it was like hard for her. Yeah. She's she's probably needed it for so many years mm -hmm. and has resisted it for so long. And so I feel like it's just a process of life where we don't want to get older. We mm -hmm. don't want to accept that the youth is gone and it's never going to come back. And the things that we were able, capable, and the identity, mm -hmm. more importantly, mm -hmm. right, to those things that we did when we were younger, and we're just going to go with that right now. And those things that are more accessible, it's like it's hard to let go. We don't want to do it, right? And, and there is a whole thing. Like, I get it. Like, you accept defeat, and that's it, right? You, you take the you take the rollator, and now you have a walker, and now you're in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. and now you decline because you don't care and you don't try. And I get that that's a potential path. But at the same time, like, she's in less pain because she's using this thing. Right. right? And but, I, but but going back, it's just I think, you know, I, I see through her – the process, I think, of what we're talking about is it's, it's a spectrum. It's a spectrum. It's yeah, not it's, just either you're like you're just young not all of a sudden like old. eighty and fucking no, decrepit. It's from it's like just, thirty five to like death. It's just this like spectrum of like kind of re this, readjusting, you, you're adjusting. And this is barring no major injury or something. So right. it's like you know, imagine like I remember in college they we talked about <clears> the whole like psychological component of an of an athlete that goes through a major injury mm. and the depression and the things that come with like your whole identity is taken away from you. Mm -hmm. And so that's like, like, you know, barring all that, I think there is just having this kind of real, like have to you kind of like a look in the mirror and readjust your approach to your goal. Yeah. And, you know, and I, th and I think, you know, to honor, there's a broad spectrum of like, I think consistency is what matters most. And there's lots of ways to have a generally fit and healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. None of them are always have to be like reps and sets in a gym. Mm -hmm. like, you know, if you want to mountain bike or surf, that's great. Totally. And I do think that there's a certain joy component, but I think fundamentally it's like honoring what 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 is it that you know would serve you the best, and exactly like you were saying, the consistency matters. So what is going to make that consistently accessible for you? Right. Because like, uh, if you fancy yourself as a power lifter and that's what you did in your 20s and 30s, and then now you just keep finding that man that just my back is just always tweaked. I'm always you know, having to recover and you're 40, you got to ask yourself, like, is there something else that you could allow into your life that gives you 80% of that satisfaction, right? but only takes 20% of the toll on your body that, you know, may not be what you've identified as, whether that's like a endurance athlete, a martial artist, a power lifter, a bodybuilder, like whatever. Just a different set of lifts but, maybe, right? But just... something, that, yeah, but like if... But now it's like, if is there something that we can do that would inc would, would would allow for more consistency? Because, like, you know, uh, case in point, anecdotally, so la like last year around January, I kind of had this like thing. I'm like, I've just been like in the gym lifting weights for many years now. But I was kickboxer in my 20s. I I've, I've always that. been like, I've been like constantly doing two a days always lifted weights and then we'd open up the crossfit gym in our late 20s we were doing like crossfit competitions in addition to training it just felt like there's always like athletics in my life of some degree you know yeah. especially as an adult then i went through this like stretch there's just nothing and i'm like that's it like i'm i'm at the time i was like 38 i'm like i'm 38 i'm not over the hill yet like i'm gonna go join this beach volleyball league turn into this like whole like thing like balloon to this like I'm doing yeah. tournaments now because I picked it up quickly. I was kind of good. I'm tall, so it worked. Fun, I just really sure. enjoyed it. Yeah, it was so sure. much fun. So you're out in the Met sand, friends, the you know, we're yeah, like all social. like social. It's got all the text and you go, you go into the game about, yeah, about like you know? a happy life. Totally, yeah, it was so much fun. And then like you know, I did this like back to back leagues and tournaments, and I was like getting good. It was like I was like, this is fun. Like, let's and then go. like, ah, what's that little ache pain in my knee? Anyways, long story short, by September, full on gnarly patellar tendonitis aka jumper's knee 
went to the doctor. It was so bad. I had to get like x-rays and there was just like, it's just tendonitis, man. I'm like, man, I have never felt tendonitis. Right. Like really? That is sure? gnarly. I could yeah. have sworn I just had grinded down my meniscus or something, but they're, yeah, like, they're like, well, they're like you, besides having like stage two, um, osteoarthritis in your knee, which is normal for a man your age. I'm just yeah. like, thanks. They're like, you know, it's just tendonitis. You just got to give it time took six months and then it, during that six month period couldn't really exercise my legs much was kind of limping around it was gnarly anyways so and then so then this year it was like okay can't do beach volleyball anymore but let me do something that does it that's not like jumping jujitsu that makes sense it's fun it's cool here we are approaching you know october of this year now and i've like so far had three kind of decent injuries through jujitsu this year and like every time i do it it's like I got to take a month off of weightlifting or at least I have to baby the weights since there's no progression in my weight training. And it's just, you know, it's just, I'm just kind of getting to that point where I'm like, man, should the game, like, okay, like I got to find something. I mean, the, I mean, I think the takeaway is, is yeah. don't try anything new. <laughs> yeah, the takeaway is <laughs> don't do any intramural sports. You know, no, but, no. But, I know, but I think it is kind of the fact that like, you know, one, I really respect because I don't, you know, in a, I guess, a, not a vulnerable share, but it's like, I don't fucking do any of that. I don't try new sports. And I think that's why you didn't have any but, tendonitis. You know, but I, but I, so I really respect the, the kind of willingness to put, cause it's time and effort too. It's yeah. not just like, you gotta oh, be vulnerable, you know, you're with new people you're, yeah, and start from the, the beginning. Whole thing, yeah. yeah. And I think there's the rewards and joys like with the volleyball that comes with it as totally. well. So I respect your pursuit of that, but it's kind of like we're talking about it. Like there might be a, a point where like, as someone who is now middle-aged officially mm -hmm. that, you know, maybe jujitsu isn't the place to start. And like, For sure. you know, and, and it's either like you love it so much. It's so much a lifeblood that you have to do it and maybe progress into it slower or take your time or then start mm -hmm. rehabbing and spending time outside of the, the dojo to make sure your joints are acclimated and ready and really going down that rabbit hole. Yeah. Or it's like, okay, well maybe I just can't jump into jujitsu at 40. Yeah, and I think that exactly exactly right. You know, like had I done the, had me or anyone, you know, in this case started maybe a five or ten years ago and kind of gotten over that initial adaptation hump. Mm -hmm. eh, it's a little bit different. Your body's more equipped, and certainly, I, there's no doubt I could get there eventually. It's just kind of at what cost. Uh, yes, and you know, for me, it's like weightlifting is important, and I don't want to keep showing up each week to my weight training sessions and have to like cut out all the volume in half because my shoulder is jacked from jujitsu, you know? Yeah, yeah, 100%. And so it's just those, you know, those little clues, you kind of like, okay, this is another one of those moments. So that's what, you know, I'm, what inspired me wanted to have this topic is just, you know, it's okay mm -hmm. to transition from what used to be to a thing that, you know, we can show up for that doesn't beat us up so much that maybe we never thought in a million years that we would be that guy. But then the reality is, is that, you know, jujitsu, volleyball, sports, weightlifting aside, like what is the real point of it all? What is the real what's, like what's, what's, why, goal? Yeah. Why are we doing this? Why, yeah. We want to, you want to look good, of course, but you want to be healthy and you want to live longer. You and there's good. nothing. Yeah, you want a better quality of life, like fundamentally. I mean, right? if you work out, if you have like a decent workout a few days a week, I mean, that is the thing. You could eat like so, shit. You could, your sleep could be jacked. You could, you know, all the other things in your life can be, you know, not great. But if the one thing is just you're consistently training, you'd yeah. be surprised how far that goes from just a general health standpoint. Yeah. It's just, it's, there's just no stagnancy. Yeah. You know, it's, there's the, 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 there's not that dirty pool of water at the corner of the creek. Yeah. It's collecting mildew. The, yeah. And the foam and whatever it is. Right. And it's, it's, it's just the truth. And I think like resistance training, is just such there's so many avenues of it so whether you're like going body weight mm -hmm. and doing like a gymnastics skill based progressive overload mm -hmm. or you're just lifting a heavier dumbbell i think that resistance training is just undeniably asking your body to show up and i think that that whole continuum is just going to be something that is infinitely accessible to make your life better mm-hmm and again, it's like, I, you know, because it's like, I don't want to shy away from being inspired and doing something that fulfills your life or looking for something that fulfills your life. You know, in a certain sense, I'm actually kind of going through a process right now where, you know, when I first started back when I was oh, fucking 15, 16, 17 and on the wrestling team, it's like I was all about the calisthenics. Mm -hmm. 
dips, push up, handstand pull up, push ups, pull ups, all the stuff. And that like progressed into the kind of what I just named, like that kind of gymnastic skill based where you're, you're like a new ability was based off the gaining of more strength mm -hmm. versus just like, okay, 35 pound dumbbell, 40 pound dumbbell. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like I've moved so far into that classic kind of functional strength training world that I almost like miss the the calisthenic body weight stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm kind of having this like I can feel this like little little smoldering inside of me that I might switch back over there because if there is something about the the success of a new position or a new movement that's inspiring. Mm -hmm. And like, no doubt, it's the same thing. Like, oh, I bench pressed 200 pounds and I bench pressed 215. And like, that feels good, but there's a certain monotony there. Right. Whereas like, it's like, oh, like I couldn't do this and now I can actually do this thing. Even yeah. if it's, even if, if it starts as five push ups to 10 push ups to a new kind of push up. And so it's just, I think, you know, I, I will, will see, and it's still just resistance training is what I want to come back to. Mm -hmm. I'm still just asking my body to do things that are hard of, hard it's hard for it to do for it to do but you know i do think there is a component of you know we gotta we gotta do something that's gonna be fulfilling as well and i think fulfillment can come in so many different forms and so it's like i don't you know there's some component of me that wants to make sure it's not just like do the boring shit in the gym totally and i think there's always a progression regression just like you kind of talk about the jujitsu if you took the time mm -hmm. and it really mattered to you you could you could adapt yeah. your way in there. It might take two years, but you totally. could if you wanted to. And so, you know, in the end, but there is a truth that like what happens in the weight room or the gym in terms of consolidated mm -hmm. chosen exercise in some capacity is always going to be the most accessible thing in a way. And it's like, to your point, like that doesn't mean it's not a binary of you right. do the weights or or you do the, you know, impact sport it's <laughs> right. it's a it's a continuum of okay well how much of each is it is appropriate and then also on a personal level like well how much am i will how much of either one am i willing to let go of in mm -hmm. order to create space in my life to not only train in this in, the, in this area but then also recover from the training in that area yeah and that's like an that's like a, a personal struggle that i'm in the midst of right now of just like, okay, like I had this idea that I want to lift weights five days a week, four days, four or five days a week would be ideal. Yeah. But then man, I do two jujitsu sessions and I'm like, I, you know, everything yes. hurts and I'm like achy and I just have to skip it. But yeah, it is, a, it's like, okay, well, what does one jujitsu session look like a week? What is doing two jujitsu sessions and maybe only doing two weight training sessions a week look like? Right, or you like know? how do you have time to then do like joint rehab yeah. or prehab, right? Like, right. okay, I want to do, to jujitsu mm -hmm. sessions a week, but it, in order to do that at my age and physical situation, I have to give time to be like I have to then carve out more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like so now maybe one of my two weight training sessions a week goes into like just complete like bulletproofing of joints. Yeah, small because I choose jujitsu and now it's only one weight training session mm -hmm. a week, right? And I think yeah. it's this kind of continuum that goes back to your age, potential injuries, you know, imbalances in your body. Yep kids i mean like you know neither of us have kids at the moment well that's what thing is that, you know that's what inspired this episode as well is like you know for so many clients that we have it's like i can't say how many times you get on these calls where it's like you know i i know what i know it works for me it's it's i think you've had clients like this too oh, yeah, like, uh, I, you know it's when i cut out carbs and run like 20 miles a week it's like when's last me did that eight years ago what's happened from eight years ago till now well i got a new job and i have family now and it's like okay listen <laughs> there's a reason why you're not running you know 20 miles a week anymore it's yeah. like it's just not realistic with your schedule yeah. to commit to waking up at five so you can get your your 40 minute run in every day mm -hmm. and so it's like these conversations that we constantly keep having with folks it's like okay we want to lose 30 pounds we know that right okay we also know that like we have like other things that we would love to do and we all have, we have sort of like the, the reality of our life. We have to kind of find that Venn diagram of like, well, what's mm. like the sweet spot of like, instead of these two a days that maybe you used to do in your 20s, but then now we're doing nothing because we don't have time to do the two a days. So therefore, you, you don't do anything because there's this kind of like, well, I got to wait until I have time to do the thing that I know worked. But it's like, well, that you don't have that time and, you, and your kids are five. So you're, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's the reason you got 12 more years of this shit. Right. So it's like, 
you know, what about a 15 minute at home hit workout three days a week? Right. Or what about a, a 15 minute run, a one mile yeah. run twice a run week? Mi- like if, one if mile. running is your yeah. thing, right? Like I get it. Like, but now you don't get to do 20 miles a week. You right. get to do three miles a week. Right. Right. right? Like literally, you know. But what, then it's or, just or that. The hit, yeah, exactly. Or it's just a new modality altogether. But like, what is the, like, it's like, can we really be real with ourselves? I think in a lot of ways and just like, what? Back to the why. Do I choose to include fitness in my life? Specifically, I got to think exercise and movement. I mean, I, obviously, this is all applicable to food and how we eat as well. Mm-hmm. But like, do I choose to include this for the just without question? Because I know it's going to make me a better person. It's going to mm-hmm. just make life better. Whether I hate the time in the gym or I love mountain biking or whatever it is, do I choose to do it? What's accessible? Mm-hmm. And just keeping it real about that, I think. Totally. You know, because understandably like life comes at you it's hard like if you've got one two three seven kids you know you got four jobs no but really really, (laughs) but really though it's you know i have a client that brings his kids to the studio Mm, that's cool yeah Yeah. and it's i'm so grateful in a way that i have that ability to let him do that but like that's the real truth of his life is that if that wasn't an option he wouldn't Mm -hmm. be in the gym Mm -hmm. yeah and you know, it'd be very easy to just not want to bring your kids and then therefore not go to the gym. Yeah, I mean, that's, and, uh, you know, and, that, and, that, so, and again, I think that it's like the inertia. One quote I heard from some book I listened to many years ago, I couldn't tell you who or, or when, but the, the quote that stuck out was never break the chain of habit. Mm. You know, everything has momentum and everything has inertia. And it's like constantly the better you can get at acclimating in real time to the moment Mm -hmm. and not having it be this all or nothing decision that you do or you don't, but just always, it's like, it's like constantly in the moment, dialing up and dialing down. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, like case in point, like instead of it just being like, well, I can't do my workouts. I can't go to the gym because we move. It's the gym's 30 minutes away now. And you know, I, I just can't, I don't have two hour block in my day to go work out. So I haven't worked out in months. It's like, it's like the better we can get at just recognizing kind of seeing the crystal ball, seeing around the corner sooner, seeing that potentiality and then acclimating in real time being like, let me just order some resistance bands. Let me just like get something moving. Even if it's just 15 minute workouts at home, Ten minute walk. because once you break that chain of habit, Man, a month goes by so fast. And when you have not worked out in a month, like Tanya just went through this, like she was, we were traveling and then she got sick. She was traveling for work for a week or two. So she couldn't go to her, her boot camps in the morning. Then we went on a vacation for right. 10, 11 days. Well, Indulgence well, travel. And then we, then she got sick. Right. So it was a month. Sickness. And, and then sickness is just, whoa. oh man. It's and it was a brutal sickness. Habits like for antibiotics. Yeah, fucking so, you know, here she do. was for nine months going to but nine months nine months well she had she had she had started in january this year had gone basically three or four days a week yeah you know counting her calories oh, nine months of doing yeah it. of going to the boot camp six a.m yeah, okay, no, no, no. off no okay yeah six so, a.m so boot camps for nine months right like you, your you body's know, in the flow now dude, she shredded like 15 pounds body fat she's like feeling good feeling good energy but man it's just but this is this is what happens yep. this is oh, how it goes yeah, yeah. yeah is that even though everything was great, it's like, boom, you know, work trip, vacation, got sick, boom, boom, boom. The stack. So that was one month of time right there. You're already gonna see a huge decline in fitness after a month. But then she lost, then the inertia of just not going and the fear of how hard that class is gonna gonna be. be The first one back. How different it is. It rolled into another month. And so it it was two months now. Yeah. she finally went back this week and of course she's so sore she can't walk but yeah, yes. i kept saying i'm like come in here with me just do 10 minutes just it's so any, hard but she, but she had hard. this like no it has to be the boot camp that i'm going to have it's, I, you know it's 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 hard man <clears throat> it's i mean i i i definitely fall victim to this pattern where life will happen to me because life always happens and i'll definitely get derailed totally. and i fall into this lull and I just witness myself in the lull when there's like nothing happening. And I'm just like, fuck, dude, I did it again. And it's like mm-hmm. happened enough times mm-hmm. where now it's like, fuck, I'm back. How'd I step I'm back into in this? the stillness. Yes. And I'm <laughs> yeah. like, and I know that I'm going to be so sore I can't walk. 
Yeah. I know it's this like now it's not like you just like even like the little trickle. It wasn't like the faucet wasn't even dripping. It's like now that the faucet's off, it's like fuck, man, I gotta. And it, and because it, it's 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 so mm-hmm. much more the mental at that point than it yep. is the physical. Like no yep. doubt, one two weeks excruciating soreness or that your body's like oh shit. But the the to to, to the mental game of being at a complete stop and coming back is just such a wild thing. It is, it is such a wild thing. I mean, I'm in it kind of right now. I mean, the, I've been man. in a I've been in a stagnancy where I just can't seem to choose to be consistent with it. It's not nothing, but like I just I'm not in that flow, and it's become such a thing now where I'm just so in my head about it, and it's mm. just like, motherfucker, mm. here I and like yet again, I'm like, well, here I am again, and the and there's no, like there's no <laughs> solution other than just it's doing just, just biting just, the bullet. Yeah, just, yeah it's, just, gotta, it's just it's just it's like face it. the music, yeah, all these getting, little quotes, all these little soliloquies, mm-hmm. and it's like, yep, you know, yeah, <laughs> and it is funny because it's just. There is just no way around it, and it's all the fears, and it's all the how much how much fitness I've lost, and how much hard it's going to be, and, mm-hmm. and who am I, and can I even do this, and all the you know like all the all the scary thoughts, yeah. You know? So yeah. if you if you ever have a hard time out there, folks, it's it's you're not alone. You're not alone. I, in fact, don't. statistically, I think ninety percent of people, <laughs> yeah, like it's tend to lose all their progress within five year period of, of any sort of major transformation, and like it just takes a very strong will to keep coming at things with childish curiosity Which with the beginner's it, mind yeah. of just like i'm gonna like if you've done a hundred six week weightlifting progressive overload cycles the 101 just it's so easy to just be like yeah okay this and this and whatever but it's like the ability to like get excited about mm. the thing that you've done a thousand times over again yeah and it's just kind of reinventing it and like and then you know i think the spirit of this episode is like being okay to adjust. Yeah. If the thing that you've done for a long time and you've identified with, start, you start in the back of your mind feeling like it's just not serving you as much as you had thought, like entertaining the idea of adopting a new style of training. At this point, I'm pretty much exclusively doing like what would you what you would consider classic bodybuilding. Yeah. And I'm not a bodybuilder, but it's just a way for me to be consistent mm-hmm. that is so low bar with intensity because every set I'm taking a minute and a half break afterwards. Yeah, just... You know, it's not like jujitsu where you literally feel a little like fear in your, you know, you feel the fear before each class because oh. you're about to spar another man who no, wants to no, choke. It's, it's hit, a battle. Hit, hit, who's, who's, whose intention is to make you tap out. Yeah, like spar so, or, or, yeah. or, you know, whatever. It's, or it's going a to a 6 a.m. boot camp where it's so easy to cancel. I didn't oh, sleep. Man. It's raining outside. I'm still sore from the other one. Yeah, I haven't I done it in a week. week yeah. There's a million reasons you can cancel a 6 a.m. boot camp. I don't fucking want to do it, right? You know, but like <laughs> when you lower the barrier of entry a little bit and you kind of make it like such a no-brainer, like, yeah, of course I'm going to do a 40-minute, you know, workout in my home or a 10-minute I mean, circuit in my living room. Even like three sets of 10 push-ups, because I think that's where I get caught up, is it is like, it, it, like avoiding that all or nothing of like, well, I got to do a solid workout. Mm-hmm. Right, and it's like going back to that, like just any type of current, right? Even if the window is cracked and there's just a little bit of air coming through, um, mm-hmm. just some type of movement, mm-hmm. momentum, so that's not a dead stop. Yeah, just don't break the chain of habit. Just don't break the chain of habit. And so it's like literally sometimes I'm just like, oh, but it's so stupid. Like when I'm gonna do three sets of ten push-ups, but when I find myself in these places where I've come to a standstill. Sometimes that is literally where I, and it's almost like this weird place from like, oh, this is stupid and it means nothing. And therefore why bother? And then I stay still. Whereas like sometimes it is, it's like, okay, let's just do, you know, like the other day I had Amanda just be, you know, just this whole, I'm gonna get woken up and just, I was just like three sets. It's like 20 jumping jacks and 15 mountain climbers per mm-hmm. leg. Just do it at a pace as quickly as you can, don't rush. But just like even that, and she was like, oh, I feel great now. You know, and it's so totally so simple and so silly, and maybe three sets of push-ups just seems like it does nothing, and it might not mean you're going to be fit from it, but it does kind of keep the momentum. It keeps the habit. a toehold on Something, on your right? fitness, yeah, but also like, I think I've experienced personally where like I'll tell myself, okay, I'm like tired, I don't feel like doing. It. All right, I'm just going to do three sets of name your movement and that's all i'm going to do for this body part today and that's good enough but then what you re- what i've realized mm-hmm. is that it's a tri- yeah. it's, it's a trip wire yeah, yeah yeah and i trick myself into saying and that gets me to just start uh, i'm not going to do the f- 
full, you know, hour long thing. I'm just going to do, I'm just going to warm up and just do easy three sets and I'm done. And then of course, three sets later, your hormones are flowing, your muscles are pumped, your joints are loose, you feel good. And you're like, all right, I can do the rest of it. Yeah, I can do a little bit more. It's no big deal. So it's like, I got 10 more minutes. Yeah, like trick, permission to just like completely trick yourself. Wasn't it the last week of the the ham and the... Ham and the garlic. Ham and the garlic. Yeah, you give yourself what you want or give yourself what you need. Give yourself a little ham. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And that goes for, you know, everything. It sure does. But yeah. All right. Well, I think that pretty much sums it up. Yeah, I think that's um, a good. It's a... Yeah, it was a good one. Just kind of a more philosophical approach to your fitness and realizing that like you don't like holding yourself at such a high standard is pretty much set you're setting yourself up for some degree of failure when inevitably life becomes life. And like we live in a culture where it's like, suck it up, work harder, no one cares, you know. And there's certain quality, I think, of just like not being too soft when it comes to holding yourself to a standard, but also recognizing that nothing matters if we're not consistent in life and so yeah. if you find that the things you're the standards you're trying to hold yourself to just consistently come at odds with the realities of your life and you consistently have mm. to put some like put your fitness on the back burner because you can't live up to the arbitrary expectations that you've set for yourself right. that adjusting those expectations down even just temporarily so that you can maintain consistency yeah. is the number one most important thing yeah right whether it's that you have an exercise in three months or you find yourself at 63 or you've had a major mm-hmm. injury yeah or all of a sudden you had your second kid like whatever it is you just i mean that was very articulate Thank you. I'm quite surprised. 40s, 40 looks good on you. <laughs> My brain's only half deteriorated. <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. We'll check y'all uh, next week for episode 39. Almost the 4 Almost. 4-0. We're chasing it. <laughs> All right. Later, guys. Peace out. Peace. Bye-bye.